Thank you, Madam Speaker. My question is directed to the Minister for Counterterrorism, Minister for Corrections, and Minister for Veterans Affairs. What measures has the New South Wales Government put in place in the correctional system to protect our community from corrections? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. And That's a serious I, um, question. The opposition will come to order. If you don't want to treat it seriously, you can leave the chamber at any time. And I thank the, uh, the honourable member for Miranda for her question. She's a hard-working local member. Who, uh, as you said, Fairfield, if you want to do little drone noises, you can leave the chamber too. <laughs> That's the level of your maturity I on this issue, is it? I acknowledge that. I am very mature. I acknowledge the interjection. No, you don't. I acknowledge the interjection from the Chamber. Nothing like what he just did. Madam Speaker, for seven years I've been waiting for a policy from him. And we got one this week. You know what he said? He wants bipartisanship. He agrees with me. For seven years we listened for a policy from him. And his only policy now is to agree with the government. And we're playing you. And we're playing you. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. on three calls will see shouting. And interjecting. And member for Fairfield, you're on three calls and will grow up. Just grow up. <laughs> Madam Speaker, community safety is the priority of this government and our approach to countering violent extremism continues as the coalition trends towards reducing crime rates across New South Wales. Uh, we want New South Wales to have the most robust counterterrorism arrangements and strongest laws in the country, if not the world. <laughs> We're investing $47 million on the next three years in the chamber, on both sides, to provide critical prison expansions and de-radicalisation programs. The High Risk Management Correction Centre, known as Supermax, is being upgraded to ensure that it has the capacity to safely manage the increasing number of prisoners of interest to national security. Madam Speaker, the upgrade includes improvements to the gatehouse, electronic security, visitor surveillance and inmate accommodation. These upgrades also bring with them more jobs. The multi-purpose unit at Correction at Golden will now house unsentenced inmates facing terrorist-related offences and inmates who are serving sentences for terrorism-related offences who are progressing through the disengagement program. The unit's electronic security is being upgraded to include CCTV, telephone and audio monitoring, X-ray machine, walk-through metal detectors and setting up at visitors' areas. A new dedicated counterterrorism unit will strategically manage the increasing risks associated with the radicalisation of inmates. This unit will enhance the safety of community staff and offenders by collating information on violent extremism within corrective services and providing strategic and timely operational and tactical intelligence to decision makers across the system. Madam Speaker, enhancing relations with other agencies in the counterterrorism field, detecting and managing risks related to the counterterrorism environment within the New South Wales Correctional Centre remains a priority. We also are understanding and identify extremist networks in custody and within the community. Identifying groups of offenders who may be at risk of radicalisation and making referrals and providing intelligence support to uh, the PRISM program, as well as vetting applications for visits, telephone calls and mail in line with the legislative requirements of extreme high risk restricted and national security inmates remains the priority. Madam Speaker, we're creating a new program for offenders convicted of terrorism related to offenders that will assess at risk and needs as well as operate an intensive disengagement program employing psychological interventions, religious re-education and reintegration work with families and inmates in transition to the community. Madam Speaker, intervention plans for this group will be multimodal, multidisciplinary <laughs> and multi-agency. It will target key areas related to identity, social relations, ideology and criminal action. Madam Speaker, but we haven't stopped there. This year we have also toughened the parole system to create a presumption against parole for anyone with demonstrated support for or links to terrorism. This includes offenders with links to terrorism irrespective of the offence for which they are in custody. Madam Speaker, we also have, unfortunately, young people in custody who are detained in juvenile justice centres as a result of terrorism offences. Whilst this number remains low, our preparedness to deal with any radical detainee is under constant review. Comprehensive procedures and resources are in place for the supervision and management of young offenders, as well as including, including in this is the assessment, program provision and psychological services. Madam Speaker, security strategies include monitoring detainee telephone usage as well as visits. The Juvenile Justice Security Intelligence Unit provides management and staff with relevant intelligence regarding any concerns that may exist 
and liaise with other law enforcement agencies. Juvenile justice staff are also trained in ways of identifying radicalisation and extremism. <coughs> Madam Speaker, this government recognises that our approach to counterterrorism and violent extremism is a shared responsibility. We back our law enforcement agencies with strong laws. Our approach of the management of radicalisation inmates is important. Madam Speaker, and this Miranda, government... and this... two minutes is granted if it's required. Thank you, Madam Speaker. In the correctional system, our approach to the management of radicalisation inmates and those at risk of violent and extremism is world class. And I have to add, Madam Speaker, that in the recent visit to Israel that I had with uh, uh, you and uh, the member for Rockdale, we did see clear evidence that the world is looking towards New South Wales and has identified us as world's best practices when it comes to dealing with terrorism. Madam Speaker, this government will continue to implement the programs, deliver the resources, introduce laws that will keep the people of New South Wales safe.